Hi, it's Martin Root with Project Heaven on Earth, and I have a delightful guest today, the author of the new book called Does My Voice Matter? Cynthia James. Cynthia has been a friend for years, and we talked about this book, and I thought it was so apropos with respect to our soul's desire for heaven on earth, having our souls speak. So does my voice matter? Uh, Cynthia, I, I've looked over the book in detail. You have some fabulous quotes that I want to jump off in terms of uh, the interview. But first of all, let me be more formal with you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to be with you, Martin. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <clears throat> this is one of your quotes. We are all visionaries. The dreams we dream are signals from our soul that we're here by design. Tell me about that. Yeah, I, I believe that that our souls come here to bring gifts, to shine, to to make a difference on this planet, to bring you know heaven on earth by bringing our most our most authentic, most powerful, most dynamic self, and and being willing to stand in the truth of who we are, um, no matter what the experience experiences or circumstances look like. So it's interesting because <clears throat> does my voice matter? Talk to me, first of all, about voice, because I, I see a connection between voice and signals to our soul, to my soul, to our soul, that those are the same thing. So I hear this signal to my soul that in a way is the voice that I want to project into the world. For me, I would say that's heaven on earth. But for many people, they hear that, they hear that uh, intuition, that voice into the soul, but they don't want to speak that into the world. So first of all, what for you is voice? So a lot of people think voice is that larynx, the sound. I think voice is about the way we fully express. So that could be voice, that could be writing, that could be singing or dancing or the way you dress or or art. It, it, it could be the way you bring your full expression on the planet. And I think th the reason I wrote the book was because so many people are asking, does my voice matter? Does my presence matter? Does my, does my authenticity or the way I express matter? And so I wanted, to say that to myself, yes, my voice matters, but so does yours. So this is interesting. What, what's the issue with me thinking my voice doesn't matter, with me thinking that I cannot express my voice authentically into our world? What stops that? Well, we have a lot of evidence that it's not safe. We have a lot of evidence that says you will be punished if you are not in agreement with whoever you're talking to. We have a, a we have a lot of evidence that says that it's dangerous to step out, you know, especially with the political divides, the cultural divides, the things happening all over the planet. You know, people are afraid to step out not only for themselves, but for their families, for their relationships. That they're, they're afraid that they will lose or get hurt. So the result of that being that the soul doesn't get to fully express itself. Multiply that by the 8 billion people in the world, and we have kind of an indicator of where culture is today. Yeah, and, and that's why we're seeing so much mental illness, why we're seeing so much addictive behavior, why we're seeing uh, relationship challenges, because if everybody isn't standing in their authenticity, then you've got a bunch of people with masks running around, not wanting to be seen or heard or experience anything that they consider painful. So how for you then, does somebody, given that fear, given that I don't feel safe, given I could be hurt, how does somebody then express their voice in a way that matters to them as an individual and to us collectively? That's a big question, Martin. So that's your is, book. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I really think. I think first of all, first of all, you have to activate courage. 
uh, because it takes courage. You know, when you think about the people that have been change makers on this planet, you know, Gandhi and Martin Luther King and Mother Teresa and different people, they've all had the courage to step outside of that box of confinement and, and holding themselves in. Now, it didn't mean that there weren't moments of fear. It didn't mean that they didn't have stuff pushing back on them. But I, I do feel that each one of them stepped into a space of freedom because there's great freedom in bringing your authenticity to any space. It's beautifully said. I remember, you know, there's been three major issues in my life. One was when I started years ago to speak about vision in Toronto, I remember people saying, you're nuts. You can't talk about vision. Whereas today vision is nothing. Then spirituality in the workplace. Oh, you can't talk about that. You can't talk about that. And then heaven on earth. You can't talk about that. You can't talk about that. And I remember what happened to me, Cynthia, was the soul's longing to express that into the world was more important to me than the fear. And so, yeah, the courage was there. Uh, I, I, there was a quote, was it that quote years ago that courage is not the absence of fear, but the fact that something's more important than the fear and you want to honor that in the world. That's yeah. what you're getting at. Absolutely. And, and here's the thing. If if we, the collective, step into that place where humanity is more important than fear and love is more important than fear and caring for one another is more important than fear and, and you know, power ceases to have uh, the call to push us to places that are out of integrity, that starts to happen. We change everything. The people don't realize the effect of one little act of courage in terms of speaking authentic, authentically. You never know the effect that it's going to have. <clears throat> Several times in my life, people have come back to me and said, do you remember years ago when you said, you know, ABC to me? No. Well, you did. <laughs> and it changed my life. You, you say as well, Cynthia, intuition is connected to a field of possibilities that does not know time and space. Intuition is connected to a field of possibilities that does not know time and space. Say more yeah. about that. Well, quantum physicists call it the quantum field. You know, spiritual people call it the absolute. You can call it whatever you choose to call it, but it's a place of potentiality and possibility that's effortless and endless. And so you get to step into that field. You get to step into that place knowing there's no time and space. So for instance, I could have a dream as a child that I seed into that field and it could manifest 20 years later because it doesn't understand time and space. It just knows this is the time for that seed to manifest. So I'm feeling like I tell people dream big, <laughs> dream big now because the universe will catch it. I love that. I love you also said a word earlier, which I wanted to, to jump on, which was freedom. Moving into that space actually gives you freedom and it impacts people in, a, in ways that you can't even imagine. As a, a man I once knew said to me, you know, you impact people directly, you know that, but you also impact people indirectly that you will never know. And I think living authentically, having your voice do that is that powerful. You, here's something I just love. You were born to be seen. Yeah. I love well, that. So here's the thing. I, I, I say to people, why would the universe breathe its life into you with the gifts that you come to share and then tell you to be invisible and shut up. That makes no sense to me. Cynthia, I, let's talk more about that because I think the times are calling for that. On the turmoil, the cultural turmoil that's going on in the world today, all the stuff that we know about, but underneath that, your book, my work, uh, your husband's work, many, many, many of our friends and people that we don't even know are reaching below the surface into the spiritual depths because the times call for it. And your book, Does My Voice Matter? The answer is yes, it matters. You were born to be seen. I yeah. love that. I mean, just that's astounding to me. 
it, you know, it just, I don't know, it just, I'm, I'm, I wrote it down this morning in preparation for the interview, and it's the last line on the sheet here. And I spelled seen, S-E-E-N. <laughs> it's almost like my soul is saying, you've got to emphasize that. You were born to be seen. What a lovely, lovely way to bookend this interview. The book is called, Does My Voice Matter? I'm assuming on Amazon. Absolutely. Cynthia James, thank you. Anything else you wanna say that I didn't ask you? No, I just wanna say to anybody listening, you are unrepeatable. You are unique and magnificent. You've come here to do something no one else can do. You can trust that. Whew. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Mark. You're, you are a heaven maker. 